Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Now, I know I've been gone for a while, but uh, I have a very good reason. I was in school and I've just graduated this past May, so I've kind of gotten the rhythm of my work schedule now. And I wanna get back to making YouTube videos and putting out content that uh, you know I'm interested in, topics I'm, I'm interested in, and hopefully topics that you guys may be interested in. And I think YouTube is a great way to uh, connect with other people. And yes, I'm back. And uh, today I want to discuss natural hair. So recently we've seen a big boom in the natural hair community. You know, many more black women embracing their natural hair. I mean, you can see it in all the commercials on television, you know, advertisements, you see more afros and braids. And yeah, it's really an amazing thing. But there are many black women who still don't, you know, embrace their natural hair. And a lot of them get relaxers or they straighten their hair, you know, or wear wigs. And, um, this video is, you know, not to offend any, anyone because everyone has the right to make their own decisions. So I just want to present some information for you guys to consider and some information on why I think you should, you know, at least try it out. So when we take a look at history, the actual inventor of relaxers is Garrett Augustus Morgan. And I'm gonna read a little information about his early life and what he did with this invention and um, his own hair company that he started. So this is from biography.com. With only an elementary school education, Garrett Morgan, born in Kentucky on March 4th, 1877, began his career as a sewing machine mechanic. He went on to patent several inventions, including an, Im an improved sewing machine and traffic signal, a hair straightening product, and a respiratory device that would later provide the blueprint for World War I gas masks. Born in Paris, Kentucky on March 4th, 1877, Garrett Morgan was the seventh of 11 children. His mother, Elizabeth Reed, was of Indian and African descent. His father, Sidney, a former slave freed in 1863, was the son of John Hunt Morgan. Garrett Morgan's mixed race heritage would play a part in his business dealings as an adult. Following the momentum of his business success, Morgan's patented sewing machine would soon pave the way of his financial freedom. In 1909, Morgan was working with sewing machines in his newly opened tailoring shop when he encountered a woolen fabric that had been scorched by a sewing machine needle. It was a common problem at the time since sewing machine needles ran at such high speeds. In hopes of alleviating the problem, Morgan experimented with a chemical solution in an effort to reduce friction created by the needle and subsequently noticed that the hairs of the cloth were straighter. After trying his solution to good effect on a neighboring dog's fur, Morgan finally tested the concoction on himself. When that worked, he quickly established the G.A. Morgan Hair Refining Company and sold the cream to African Americans. So that's a little bit of the history. This product was actually created on accident and you can see he sold this cream that he created to other African-Americans and it ended up being a very successful thing. And of course, his father was a former slave, so you can kind of see in that time period why African-Americans would want a product like this. It's because of society. And in that time period, you wanted to blend in and be accepted by white people. Many black women today still relax their hair. And, you know, this could be for a variety of reasons. I mean, there's still some places in society where people will be kicked out of places or they may be 
prevented from getting a job because of their natural hair you know if they have their hair in locks or braids or so i mean it's still a thing of society and back in the day most black women had their hair in a relaxed state and it was it was to sort of fit in with society so black women can relax their hair for that reason i think a lot of black women may not know how to manage or take care of their natural hair but today we're going to look at the relaxers that are in use today and the science behind these products and the negative effects that could occur. When we see the process, you're taking a very coily or curly strand of hair and getting it bone straight. How does this process work? Well, we're gonna take a look at a blog post from UCLA Center for the Study of Women. Human hair is largely composed of tough, fibrous proteins known as keratin, and the proteins in our hair are held together by strong bonds known as disulfide bonds and relatively weaker bonds known as hydrogen bonds. The straightness or curliness of our hair is determined by the shape of our hair follicles which cannot themselves be changed, but hydrogen and disulfide bonds play a large role in changing the curl pattern of our hair once it grows out of said hair follicles. Because hydrogen bonds are weak, applying heat to hair using hot combs, blow dryers, or flat irons disrupts the hydrogen bonds in our hair and makes the hair straight. However, these bonds can easily revert to their original positions once exposed to water through humidity or washing. So this isn't permanent, but I would avoid those as well because I mean, it's still altering your hair. And if you flatten your hair enough times, you know, it, it can, you can get heat damage. Hair relaxers are usually strongly alkaline work by breaking the much stronger disulfide bonds in our hair, resulting in a permanent straightening of the hair that is not reversed by contact with water. However, as mentioned before, hair straighteners and relaxers do not change the shape of the hair follicle itself, so new hair will grow out in its natural texture. As a result, people with relaxed hair often return to the salon regularly to chemically straighten their new hair growth. So really, I mean, uh, besides science, getting your hair relaxed every, I don't remember how long, you know, I haven't been to the salon in such a long time. I don't remember how often I had to get it relaxed, but it's expensive. It is well known that hair relaxers can It is well known that hair relaxers can have undesired effects on the hair itself, such, such as making hair lighter over time, making hair more prone to breakage, and causing hair thinning and even hair loss. Furthermore, the strong chemicals found in hair relaxers can also cause scalp irritation or even chemical burns if left on for too long. And this problem can be aggravated by using alcoholic hair products causing long-term scalp damage or bald spots. However, some of the scariest health risks associated with hair relaxers have little to do with the hair at all. Lye-based relaxers, which contain the caustic alkaline agent sodium hydroxide, can cause severe burns to the skin as well as irritation to the nose, throat, and respiratory tract. Because of the dangers of lye-based relaxers, many women have switched to no-lye relaxers, which contain weaker alkaline ingredient agents that are less likely to cause burns and irritation. However, these relaxers are not without their risks. For users of both lye and no-lye relaxers, there is a high risk of dermal absorption of the toxic chemicals in these relaxers because of the scalp lesions and burns that often form during treatment. So, I mean, literally it's being put on your scalp and you know, everything that comes in contact with your skin absorbs into your skin. So besides getting burns and 
scalp damage or bald spots and stuff. This stuff is absorbing into you. And while the aforementioned issues largely affect the women who have their who have their hair relaxed, there are a number of health issues that also affect the overwhelmingly black female salon workers who repeatedly treat their customers' hair. In fact, many of these salon workers have complained about developing work-related health complications of their own, ranging from respiratory difficulties to dermatitis and other forms of skin irritation. So not only is this affecting the customers who are getting their relaxers, it's also affecting the people applying the relaxers, the people working in the salon. And reading through this, you can just see the list of negative, potential negative effects that you can um, acquire through this process. The chemicals and relaxers are not good for you. And we're gonna look at ingredients of one of them, which, <laughs> you know, it's funny how the packaging on certain products is. And I think more of the packaging is turning to this nowadays because a lot of people are looking for natural alternatives, you know, healthier products and food to consume nowadays because I think people are starting to become more health conscious. But let's take a look at this one. This uh, relaxer that you can buy at Walmart. It's called ORS Olive Oil Full Application No Lie Hair Relaxer. Now, what kind of draws you in about the packaging? You know, it's got that green color. So, oh look, this is a natural one. <laughs> and then it has olive oil on there to make it seem more natural. And um, yeah. It, it tries to draw you in like that, but let's take a look at the ingredient list. Okay, it says olive oil, built-in protection, no lie, hair relaxer base. First ingredient, water. Okay. Petroleum. Mm. Paraffin. Paraffinum liquidum. That's a mineral oil mineral oil uh cedaryl alcohol calcium hydroxide propylene glycol peg 75 linoleum polyquaternium 22 olea europolia olive fruit okay that's olive fruit oil that's supposed to be the olive oil right there. Which ingredient is that? That's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the ninth ingredient on the list. So of course they're gonna put olive oil, olive oil in the title of the relaxer on the packaging, but it's the ninth ingredient in the list. I mean, it might as well just be this. First, let's turn to Judges chapter 16, verse 13. And you know, uh, most, most people know the story of Samson. Um, let's see how Samson describes his hair in this verse. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, if thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. You can see here, he has seven locks. So, and he was of the tribe of Dan too, when you read in Judges. So he was one of the Israelites. So that's one scripture you can look at uh, referencing hair. And also in Daniel chapter seven, there is a description, description of the Most High's hair Let's take a look at that. Daniel chapter seven, let's start in verse one to get more context of what this chapter is talking about. It says, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. 
So this is one of Daniel's visions that he is seeing. Let's go to verse nine. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like, like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. So it describes his hair like the pure wool. And we know wool can be many colors. So people who say, uh, it was white. That means his hair was white. It says his garment was white as snow. His hair, the hair of his head was like the pure wool though. So <laughs> who has woolly hair? These scriptures kind of give a hint to who the children, children of Israel are, you know. What are some of their characteristics and features? So I want to talk about my own experience. Now, growing up, of course, I was your average little black girl who had, of course, I had my natural hair for a little bit and I would have barrettes in my hair all the time. But then I eventually transitioned to a phase where I was getting relaxers. So I believe I had my hair relaxed from like, you know, elementary school to freshman year of high school. And I remember times where I would have the, those box kit relaxers that you can do at home. And there was this experience I had with one. It, it was a, it was a just for me. <laughs> relaxer and you guys know if you ever got your hair relaxed you've probably seen one of these one day i had that applied to my hair and it was left on for too long because eventually i started feeling this burning sensation on my scalp and little bumps and you know when i would get my hair relaxed at the salon I mean, you would just be there, you have to dedicate half of a day to that. And then at the end, you pay, <laughs> you pay too much money for it. And I mean, even though I had my hair straight, you know, and I could wear it out and stuff, I would literally always put my hair in a ponytail. <laughs> like that's the hairstyle I would do every day. Just a ponytail and a headband. And my hair was, never growing like it seemed to be the same length for a really long time now I know that it was just breaking off at the same rate that that it was growing so it never got longer but eventually I went natural and eventually I remember seeing my first natural hair video I was watching everybody's natural hair videos and <laughs> Believe me, there were still times where I was struggling because it was like, you know, you're not used to having a TWA, your hair is so short, you want it to grow out so fast. And you know, there, there could be times when you struggle with accepting how your hair is, but you really learn to love it. And now my hair is like down to my mid back. I remember starting and it was, when I started, it was to the tip of my nose. Like when I would do my length check, it was just to the tip of my nose. So I encourage you guys, try to experiment with your hair a little bit. And there's lots of, like there's so many videos on YouTube now that are natural hair videos. So, you know, lots of people to teach you how to take care of your hair. So I just encourage you, I encourage you to try it out if you haven't and embrace your natural hair.